Hello, welcome to this second concept video. Um, the, the big umbrella is that we're trying to integrate powers of trig functions. And in the previous three videos, we looked at the first bullet point there, how to integrate powers of sine and cosine. Maybe one of them's there, maybe both of them's there. And we were able to fully answer the question, how to attack it. Now we move on to the second level. We're interested in being able to integrate powers of tangent and secant. Okay, in this video, I explain the method, uh, what you should do when, and if we have time, we'll go over an example. If not, then we'll just um, save that for another video. All right, my name is Nakai Rimmer, and I'm here to uh, hopefully help you understand uh, this a little better. Um, here we go. We're just talking about powers of tangent and secant. So first up, we'll have what happens if the power of tangent is odd? And the power of secant is, is, is more than just a, uh, uh, is one or more. Basically, I need a power of secant present to do this method. All right. If the power of tangent is odd, it's very much like what happened back with the powers of sine and cosine. What you're going to do is factor out one of those powers. But also, I'm going to need you to factor out a power of secant. What, why did we do this back when we had sine and cosine? Why did we factor out? We factored out so we could set up a u sub. What we factor out in the beginning is part of du. And so this is going to be part of du. Secant tangent. Okay. What function has secant tangent as its derivative? It's going to be secant. You're going to let u be equal to secant. And then the secant tangent that you factored out in the first step will be du. Okay. Now there might be other powers of tangent still around. If you take out one from an odd, you're still going to have an even power left over. Just like back when we had sine and cosine, we use an identity to help us transform those even remaining powers. This identity though is different with tan and secant. Um, we use tan squared is equal to secant squared minus one to transform the remaining even powers of tangent. Okay. At that point, it becomes u sub, you let u equal secant, and you're able to just power through the end of that problem. There'll be a polynomial in u, nice and easy. That's what you do when the power of tangent is odd, and you do have a power of secant available there as well. Okay. Now, next level, what do you do when the power of secant is even? In the same format basically we're going to we're going to factor something out now even uh, two four six so if the power of secant is four what we're going to do is factor out two powers of secant now every time we do this first step the purpose behind it is to set up du what function has secant squared as its derivative tangent so this is set up to be a u equals tangent now, if you have some remaining even powers left over, if you had secant to the fourth and you factored out this secant squared, you got another secant, you know, squared here to deal with. And just like above there, the identity is going to be this time, those secant squared equals one plus tan squared. That's how you're going to transform the remaining powers of secant. And you are set up for a u sub at that point. This could be done whether there's powers of tangent present or not. You don't even need them. Set up your u sub, let u be tangent now that you traded these secant squares for tangents, and you got it from there. All right. Now, these can overlap. I mean, the power of tangent can be odd, and the power of secant can be even. Why not? Well, if there's overlap, then just pick one of these methods. You can't go wrong. All right. And then the last basically thing to say is that, uh, well, if you have anything else, so what's nice about uh, sine and cosine is that all cases were able to be handled. But with secant and tangent, not all cases are able to be handled. If you have anything else, then you just have to, um, th there's, no, there's no set method for it and we'll have to figure out a way to work our way through it. And we'll see a whole video just on step C, okay? Um, th in this video, we're gonna do a step A example. In the next video, we'll do a step B example. And then in, and, and then in, the, um, in the next video after that, we'll look at step C examples, all right? Okay, great. So here we have 
the, um, part A, where we have the power of tangent odd, and there's some secant powers floating around. The example is going to be tangent cubed, secant cubed. I'm calling this example five because we had four previous examples in this section. The power of tangent is odd. So we go attack the method by saying, let's factor out a power of tangent. Let's factor out a power of secant. I got to have those powers of secants available there. That's why I'm talking about the n being greater than or equal to 1. I need those guys there. Uh, I like to color code it. So what I'm going to do is put those guys in red. Secant tangent. Now there's some tangent power still remaining. And there's some secant power still remaining. Don't touch the secant powers remaining. The method says in step two, transform the tangent powers that are now guaranteed to be even. Transform them how? Using the identity that tan squared equals secant squared minus one. So I'm a color coded blue here and I'm gonna trade in the tan squared for secant squared minus one. Not gonna touch the other two powers of secant and I'm gonna leave these guys off to the side from step one, the secant and the tangent. This is all a ploy to set you up for a U sub. If you're confused, go back to step one and say, whose derivative did I just factor out? Okay, secant tangent is secant's derivative. So that's what you should let U equal. Let U equal secant, and you'll be able to finish this problem out. Okay, the original problem was an indefinite integral with tangent cubed and secant cubed. And what's in red and blue and black there is the replacement for that. And now we're about to go set up a U sub. Let U equal to secant. The blue becomes just U squared minus 1. The black is just U squared. That's why we didn't touch them. And the red is exactly du, secant tangent. Uh, I, I kind of messed around the order there. I lost my colors, but that's okay. And, and we're basically done. We have to distribute a polynomial integral, u fourth minus u squared. We're ready to go. u to the fifth over five minus u to the three over three plus a constant. We're feeling like we're done. We want to get out of there. And no, we can't though. You can't give an antiderivative in one variable when the question came at you in another variable. So we just need to trade back in. And our substitution is how we trade back in. Replace all your u's with secant x. So instead of u to the fifth over five, it's one fifth of secant to the fifth, one third of secant to the third, plus the c, and you did it. That's how you act, that's how you attack the problem when the power of tangent is odd, and there's some secant powers laying around for you to factor out one of those as well. Okay, all right, great. In the next video, what we're going to do is look at part B when you have the power of secant being even. We'll look at an example of that, walk through it. And then um, after that, we'll have another video where uh, none of this works and we'll have to figure something out. Okay, great. Thank you. My name is Nikai Rimmer and I'm here to help you work your way through this. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Um, take care. I'll see you in the next video.